lot of us have been there, going up that lift hill, getting ready for that exciting ride on the other side, and then what happens? It stops. And nobody knows why. They say it broke down, but what's a breakdown really mean? So we're going to look at it today, and today we're more diving in specifically to the block segments that make up a roller coaster. So it's going to be a very high overview because this topic can get very, very, very long and very, very, very intense. So I don't want to get that deep of a dive right now, but if you'd like to know more, let me know. I'll be happy to dive into something more specifically, but we're just going to be looking at a high level block control for today. Now get ready. Here we go. So we're going to start off looking at logic controllers. Logic controllers are what make the ride run, and they're also what's needed for safety. So I dusted off an old program that I like to play around with, something I purchased a long time ago, and I get to demonstrate a very high-level basic block control of one segment of a ride that's been watered down so I can try to tell you how some of the basics work. Here we go. I know what you're thinking. Is this guy literally filming his computer screen? Yes. Yes, I am. Uh, this is what happens when you don't have uh, transfer programs between archaic computers that you used to use uh, 20 years ago. <laughs> this is it. But anyways, this is a training program that I used. It was a uh, it's called the uh, Logix Pro, put on by the Learning Pit. It's still available for purchase today. It's not the most current, up-to-date version, uh, but it's pretty close. Anyways, this program is meant to emulate a RS Logix 500, uh, which is what some very small rides these days have on them. Most of them are into the 5,000s and above. But this is a rudimentary setup of how this system is going to work. Um, and for this exercise, I've pretty much only looked at a very high level block A. And t blocks on rides are typically divided into segments. Uh, you need two blocks per train, bare minimum. So one ride with four trains, you would have block A, B, C, and D. And then if you had three trains, you'd add more blocks and more blocks and more blocks. The basic principle is a train can never occupy another Occupy block at the same time. So to do that, we have to give it permissions and stuff to move in and out of blocks. So for this, we are looking at block A. And up at the top is what we care about here. Well, one says block A is occupied. And the other one is the unlatch signal for that occupied. So down here, a little further on, we've added some sensors. These four sensors along the track, uh, these will get triggered as the train goes by. And then these sen sensors are also represented down here. And they're also represented here. And again, down here. Now, people think sometimes that the sensors are lining the track all over the place. They're typically not. The free run track that you're out doing loops and corkscrews on is typically unmonitored. These sensors are actually represented as the very top of the lift hill or the entrance to the block break uh, or station or transport like a transfer uh, track somewhere along those lines. So that's where these sensors would be. Now what we're going to do in this case is I modeled this similar to like a B&M coaster would have uh, the logic that I'm used to working with on one of theirs, an old one. Uh, they used a company and they were familiar with counting the train all over the place. So there were sensors on the load unload side of the track and they would count the wheel carriers as they passed by and then there were sensors down the belly of the train and they would count the belly of the train as well. So that's the way I set this up. I set these sensors up and I said we're gonna have two sensors looking at the train coming in and we have two sensors counting the belly of the train 
as it passes by, or we could just say the other side. We'll, just, we'll use wheel carriers. So we'll see two wheel carriers coming in, two wheel carriers going out. So this is counting the train. So what we're going to do up here is we're going to start off with the block information empty. And we're looking at these guys right here. And we say in order to reset the block, we're going to have to say that sensor 1 cannot be occupied, sensor 2 cannot be occupied, sensor 3 cannot be occupied, sensor 4 cannot be occupied, and there can be no count in the block. And then to occupy the block, what I'm going to say is any one of those four sensors can be occupied and a count can exist. If any one of those five conditions are met, the block registers as occupied. Now underneath here is where I'm doing the counting. I'm going to count my wheel carriers as they go by. My preset is zero, so I say I'm going to start with no wheel carriers. And every time this sensor goes high or gets flagged, it's going to count and put a one right in this pre this uh, I'm sorry this accumulation box right here. And I'm going to do that for all four sensors. And then down at the bottom, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I'm looking for the train to leave. So what this command is going to do is I'm going to say that as long as all four sensors counted eight wheel carriers passing by, I'm going to tell it that the block is empty. And then down here, I'm going to say that in order to reset all the block information, I'm going to say that sensor 1 has to be low, or in this case it'll actually be high, because uh, it's looking for nothing in front of it, and sensors are built in such a way where if you lose power to the sensor, it will occupy the block. So a power failure will cause ghost trains all over the place. Uh, sensor 2 has to be made, sensor 3 has to be made, sensor 4 has to, has to be made, my block empty command has to be made, and then the thing is to reset that block, I'm going to say block B has to be occupied. That's the train moving into the next block. That tells me it's moved out of block A, and now it's into block B, and we can reset block A. So let me reset the camera and the simulation and then I'll show you a little bit. It's not much to watch but it helps. Okay, I've reset my simulator and I'm gonna go back in here and open up my basic roller coaster logic that I just made. Okay, and then I'm going to go to my simulations and I want to do the IO simulator for this. Here we go. And then I'm going to download it to the processor. All right, and this is my simulation. So my counters come up because I didn't do some program startup stuff. They all come up with a count of one to start with. I am going to go ahead and hit the, just like you would if you were showing up to a ride, you start with the master block reset. I'm going to trigger that guy. And that will reset all my counts. I've gone through, my block A is not occupied, all of my sensors are active in the block, and I have no count. All my counts are at zero. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that there is a train approaching, and I'm going to go over here to the first sensor, and I'm just going to flag one sensor momentarily. After I flag that one sensor, you can see there's my count of one right there. All my other counts are zero. But now my block is registered as occupied because my count bit is tripped. Okay, we look down here. I use some greater than or equal to one. So as soon as my first sensor went high, which was right there, I went ahead and tripped that counter and now we know that there's a count in here. Uh, for troubleshooting wise, 
if you go up to the top of the lift hill like we were talking about and stop, this is what a lot of times mechanics will show up and find. They'll look at the PLC screen that the ride operator looks at and they'll find out that one of the blocks is registered as occupied when in fact there's nothing out there. So then this has to go through a whole reset procedure for most places. It typically takes multiple people to do. They have to get people off the ride to do it and do a block reset where they get this information back to correct. Then they have to figure out what sensor went bad and why and either go out and replace it or make some sort of other repair to the processor or wiring to and from. But in this case, for the demonstration, we're going to move along, and I'm going to go ahead and move my train further in. So I had a one count there. I'm going to take this other switch and count up there. And then I'm going to say two more, three, and four. This is where B&Ms typically start counting as well. So you see I have my entrance. I have one. I have a four and four count. We've already counted half the train. And then... I'm going to start moving in the fifth one, and as I do that, I'm going to count there as well. I'm going to go six, then seven, and then eight. Now I've done that in a way like a train would. So you see down here, I've got an eight count there, also got an eight count there, and then down here I still have four and four because they're typically set up halfway and then I'm gonna count those it's gonna be five and five six and six seven and seven eight and eight okay so now because I've counted all my wheel carriers I've said that the train has come all the way into block A the train has left block A so now up here my equals eights are all active and now my bit that says the block is empty is now on so my block A is empty I got sensor four is okay three is okay two is okay one is okay I'm just missing that block B occupied and that's typically set as soon as the train leaves this segment and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit that switch saying that the train has left right there and then as soon as I do that, notice my block A empty has gone away. My counters have been reset. And my block A occupied is no longer latched. That means this block is now ready to accept the next train. Train has come into it, train has gone out of it. The term ghost train is thrown around a lot in this industry and that's for this exact scenario where the processor thinks that a train is on the track when in fact it is not there that's false block information so it says that block C is occupied when in fact there is nothing in block C uh, ghost trains are also typically mistaken uh, as part of the system components as something else is wrong and we can dive into that on another video, but basically the permissions for entering a block are not correct. Not so much if there's a train is there or not, but it's if it's safe to enter the block. We'll cover that in a different time.